Hi, this is Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California. Recently, a firestorm erupted over the comments that were made by Christian singer Lauren Daigle, an incredibly gifted vocalist and highly talented artist. I, for one, have an appreciation of her music and the beauty of her voice. Her song, Trust in You, has often brought me to tears, especially when she sings the words, when you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. Her song, You Say, has spoken words of encouragement to me when my spirit was down and I was feeling useless. Yes, pastors have down times and often can feel that their efforts to guide people into the love of the Lord are not valued, rejected, or completely ineffective. With that said, Lauren's songs have been used by the Lord in my life many times, and I truly appreciate her music. Lauren recently was a featured artist on the Dominic Natty Show on iHeartRadio. While being interviewed, she was asked if homosexuality is a sin. It has been her response to this question that has stirred up a great number of people. Lauren answered, I can't say one way or other if it's a sin, I'm not God. When people ask questions like that, I just say, read the Bible, find out for yourself. When you find out, let me know, because I'm learning too. Well, this question may be connected to her appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show in October. In that show, Ellen hugged her and made her feel cared for, showed her kindness. We all know that kind treatment is always appreciated and is very attractive because when someone shows us kindness, the kindness is interpreted as love. Apparently, Lauren felt loved and in response spoke well of Ellen. Because of these things, Many Christians registered disappointment and anger at Lauren, saying she compromised when she avoided a biblical answer. They know that to whom much has been given from them, much is to be expected, and were truly upset that she didn't speak the truth in her interview. In answer to this, her defenders are saying that Jesus taught believers not to judge others. The obvious inference would be love triumphs over judgment. We should not treat others unkindly and Saying that homosexuality is a sin is, is harsh and wrong and judgmental. They're quoting Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, where Jesus says, Judge not that you be not judged. Well, is this true? Did Jesus teach believers to suspend judgment and discernment? Are we to accept all sinful behavior and never make mention of it out of love? With that said, I thought it would be good to look at that verse to see if believers are commanded to accept all sinful behavior and to not address it out of love for sinners. Under today's guidelines, tolerance is the highest virtue. Tolerance is defined as the ability or willingness to bear with something in particular, the existence of opinions or behavior that one does not necessarily agree with. Many today believe in a superficial unity glossed over by sentimental love. This sentimental love has led to them accepting anything except biblical truth this is to be expected of those who do not claim faith in Jesus or the Bible. When in the church, it is found in those who do not read or study scripture. Sadly, this belief is often fostered by pastors who do not teach the Bible or encourage the church to do so. In many ways, it is the fruit of fearful pastors who want to be liked by everybody and avoid teaching the whole counsel of God out of fear of losing congregations. When I was first saved, we call this way of thinking sloppy agape. And today it seems that this way of defining love and avoiding truth has become the norm. As a Christian, I'm not surprised that people accept sinful behavior. Isaiah chapter eight, verse 20 reads, to the law and the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. Well, this is the way it has always been. There's sin and those who make excuses for it. What is concerning is that people who profess to be saved have become indifferent about sin. Instead of desiring truth and embracing it, they take the side of error. In this sermon, Jesus was speaking of the unmerciful condemnation of others. He was saying by practicing this kind of judgmentalism, we replace God as the final judge. The fact is we do not know a person's motives because only God can and does. Because we don't have all the information, it's best to leave this kind of judgment to God. 
If our attitude is judgmental or self-righteous, people resent us. If we must bring correction, it must be done with gentleness and humility, which brings us back to the situation with Lauren Daigle. When Lauren went on Alan's show, many took to social media to criticize her. It would seem that they think Christians should only talk to other Christians. Obviously, that is not what Jesus did, nor is it what he taught because he came to seek and save those who are lost. He made it clear that only the sick will go to a doctor. He said that he didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This is the heart of the mission of Jesus. This is also the heart of Calvary Chapel. The fact is, sinners do not always come to you. You are to go to them. It would seem that Lauren believed that her being on Alan's show was an opportunity to share the love of God. In this, I completely support her and I want to encourage her. We need to remember that the fields are white for harvest. Alan's show is one of the highest rated afternoon shows. Millions of viewers watch, millions could hear the love of God. The problem seems to be that because Alan is a lesbian and some think Christians should not be on her show. My question is simple. How will she be reached when Christians think she's too evil to love and share Jesus with? The fact is, Lauren made a mistake if she thought she would not be confronted over her answer. When Lauren said, I can't say one way or the other, if it's a sin, I'm not God, she was wrong. Scripture is clear on the subject. Homosexuality is a sin and is stated to be so in numerous passages found in Leviticus or Romans, 1 Corinthians, or other books of the Bible. Lauren would know this, and for whatever reason she may have had, she either declined to give a proper answer or she's grappling with what scripture says herself. If what I read is accurate, as a believer, Laura needs to be corrected and encouraged. The pressure to, to compromise is incredible and opportunities to do so numerous. The fact is, the better known the Christian, the brighter the spotlight shines on them. In a day when the church expects its entertainers to be theologians, it's difficult for them. That's the price they pay for speaking for the Lord and gaining a living singing of Him. It comes with the territory and is actually one of the prices we pay for our faith in Jesus. Lauren needs to realize that she's not simply a singer, but is a witness. She needs to seek the Lord for understanding, be willing to pay the price. She needs to spend time in God's Word, surround herself with mature believers. If she's going to sing about Jesus, she had better grow to know him on a deeper level. With that said, correction should have come in a more gentle and understanding way. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2 read, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Only those whose hearts are filled with the love of God can keep this command. The love of the Father is best reflected in His children when they treat others with love. When correction is necessary, may it be done lovingly, firmly, and kindly. May the church live up to the teachings of Jesus, and may we love one another and learn to care for others. This Sunday morning, I will give a more full study on Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. This is Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California.